fish by I'm back again for another fishes Friday rant and it is another Saturday I understand that conflicting schedules all that kind of stuff you know things happen but anyway we, I come to you guys this week to talk a little bit about the Rockets and James Harden uh, to talk about this all of a sudden huge outburst in scoring from a lot of the stars in the league and, you know, just to go over um, also what the Suns general manager said about um, trading Isaiah Thomas. So, first things first, let's jump into the Rockets. It, it's, it's just really all becoming a really funny but also corny and bad joke with this whole Rockets team. The this whole thing coming out that James Harden was the one who pushed them to fire McHale, who has been pushing them to trade Dwight Howard, and doing all this sort of stuff is just quite honestly dumb. <laughs> I mean, uh, when I look at this situation, I'm just like, okay, this whole thing that's going on, how all these guys now are going into Houston. Um, the, everyone's being looked at as just like it's a like circus over there in Houston, and people are in and out of there. You got this whole thing now with James Harden apparently pushing people out. Um, Dwight Howard has already been looked at as a guy who kind of just fools around more than he does actually like compete and try and be serious. It's not that luring for a free agent. Like, a, a free agent's going to look at all of this. He's going to look at all of the media surrounding it and everything. And he's going to be like, okay, well, they're a decent team, but they're not playing to their potential because of all of this background stuff happening. And you got a lot of – you got a two kind of headstrong superstars that want to run things their own way and go, th uh, go about the offense their own way rather than playing as a team and playing as one unit – to try and become the best team in the league. And when you have a team like that, it's going to be very, very difficult to beat the teams like Golden State, San Antonio, Cleveland, uh, Oklahoma City. It's going to be hard to beat those people, those guys, in a seven-game series if you can't play all together, if you can't put your egotistical differences aside and everything and come together and play basketball. And when you think of the stereotypical team that doesn't really play team ball and is more about me, 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 the first team that usually comes up is Houston. You got a guy in Dwight Howard who wants to be the centerpiece of the offense. When he was the centerpiece of the offense in Orlando, he was happy for the most part until the end of that. And he, he just... He's not the same caliber of player anymore. That's what age does to players. He's still a very, very good center, and he could be dominant still, but we just haven't seen him do that because he's not really uh, taking charge of the offense much. And granted, it still is kind of hard to do that as a center who can't really shoot farther than like three feet outside of the rim. Um, but you still have another guy in James Harden who... I don't want to say is a ball hog, but he is one of those guys that needs the ball to operate. Um, I, I remember last season saying, you know, after all these stats and everything with Ty Lawson coming, he could eventually, uh, he could eventually thrive with the more off ball catch and shoot opportunities because he shot pretty well on those last season. But that obviously wasn't the case because this whole Ty Lawson thing was just a whole train wreck. And he had to go back to really doing things himself with the starting squad again. And Ty Lawson was put down on the bench squad. And now it comes out that there's potentially a buyout uh, it, it being talked about between Lawson and the Rockets. So obviously that didn't work out either. So it pretty much takes them back to square one where they were last season. And they didn't get out of the West. So, there's a lot of weird things happening. And like I said, with James Harden, he's a guy that, that needs the ball to operate. He's more, he's more of the playmaker and offensive guy that has to have the ball in his hands. And he has to be the one to make the play. Because that's how he thrives more in the offense. So, 
when you try and get better point guards, when you try and get better facilitators, it's kind of hard because Harden will work off the ball a little bit, but for the bulk of his minutes, he's going to want the ball and operate with the ball. So for a guy like Dwight Howard who needs those entry passes but can still get his points off of the boards, playing alongside a guy like James Harden just isn't really going to click all that well. We've seen it happen. We've seen those two play and coincide together, and it translated into some wins. It translated into some big wins. Did it take them all the way? No, because they still needed a couple more pieces, like maybe on the bench and a a better point guard. But we've seen them coincide, and we, we all know that it's possible for them to do that. It hasn't been that possible for them to do that over long stretches of time, but we've seen it happen in the playoffs uh, against different teams like the Portland Trailblazers and uh, the Clippers and all, all sorts of different people. We've seen them do it, but like I said, we haven't seen them do that over a long enough to sh- a long enough stretch to say oh, they can definitely keep this kind of thing up for the championship, for, like, throughout the entire playoffs. If you've never seen that happen, it's usually a good telltale sign that it's probably not going to happen. And while a lot of people say, this is is kind of just like a side note, Um, while a lot of people say that, like, oh, the Clippers are the team that whine the most, they're the most, like, prima donna kind of team, I think the Rockets are giving them a run for their money, to be honest with you. Uh, They they might not complain to the refs as much as the Clippers, but with this whole thing going on with players trying to push coaches out, with players trying to push other players out, uh, superstars just not being happy with the kind of offense they're getting, superstars just not being happy that they don't have the ball as much, it really seems like they're a big like contender for this most prima donna team and I I wouldn't be surprised if the Rockets end up taking the throne of the Clippers as you know the most whiny the most complaining prima donna team in the league sure they do they do still have some guys like on the bench that are some hard-working guys like Corey Brewer but now it's kind of just like there's just a couple superstars who are complaining about their roles and coaches getting fired because of players' ineptitudes. That's just, that's what I see with the Rockets right now. Um, Okay, so moving on to uh, the the, the point explosion from all these stars all of a sudden. I mean, you had Anthony Davis scoring close to 60 points. You had uh, Curry going for 50 and 10 threes. You had... Kyle Lowry going for 43 points last night in a a game-winning shot over the Cavs. I mean, there was other numerous other guys who've scored 40 points as well. I mean, these guys are just pouring in the points. And I can already tell you that all those people who say NBA basketball is better than NCAA basketball, whatever, they're going to point to this and be like, oh, see, NBA players don't play defense. And it's like, come on, dude. If you want to see a game that nobody plays defense, look at the All-Star game from this this year. Look at the All-Star game from last year. That's what happens in an NBA game if you do not play defense. These teams get close to 200 points. There are obviously, obviously a lot of great defenders in this league. And it's not like the guys are just sitting there like, okay, drive right past me and get a layup because I don't care. I just want to score on the other side. Nobody really does that. Not even guys like that that we make fun of for that, like J.R. Smith or James Harden. Those guys still do play better defense than some of the college kids I've seen. And there's a reason they're in the NBA. There's a reason for that. And so that whole thing, that whole, I don't even know where that came from, the whole, the whole mindset that the NBA doesn't play defense is dumb, is stupid. You should stop saying it. And you're annoying for saying it if you still are. I'm just I'm just putting it out on the table right there. I'm just laying it out for you. Anyway, sorry, got off on a tangent there. Um 
So these guys are just going off for points. And it's really fun to watch because it's not just your usual suspects all the time. Yes, Steph Curry, Anthony Davis, those guys are lighting up the scoreboard pretty much night in and night out. But you got a guy like Kyle Lowry who drops 43. You got you had a uh, when the Raptors faced the Timberwolves, you had DeRozan with 30 something and Wiggins with close to 30 something. You have guys like Julio Okafor going for 30 something points and and then there's just a, a whole slew of guys that are getting around that 30 to 40 area that aren't the usual suspects. They aren't the they aren't the usual stars, the the superstars that we already know could drop 40 at any point. Um, there's these other guys that are stepping up, they're draining their shots, they're coming in and just, you know, taking matters into their own hands, like Kyle Lowry, who has been a very, very much improved player over the last few seasons, and he's over here carrying, helping carry the, the Raptors to a number two seed, and then they just beat the Cavaliers. Um, granted, it was in Toronto at home, so we obviously would still be like, I wonder if they could do the same thing in Cleveland, but that's still a big thing for them because we've seen the Raptors, well, a team, Raptors and teams like the Raptors that have played well during the regular season and then bounced out in the first round. But um, it's still promising to see this kind of thing because it, it's nice to see kind of a, a parody in the league where, you know, they might not have superstars, but they have a couple stars who can really help them win games, who can light up the scoreboards, who can help excite fans. It's nice to see that around the entire league instead of just these like top five teams with some superstars on it. And so this whole like scoring outbreak from the entire league is really speaking to that. It's saying like, hey, we have all these people who could do this at any time. It's not just the LeBrons, the Durants, the Currys, the Westbrooks. It's the Kyle Lowrys, the DeMar DeRozans, it's the Damian Lillards. These guys can also do that and they're not the, like the top five, top ten players in the league. And, I mean, that's just speaking to where the game is at today. These guys can light it up at any moment. And if you if you follow um, us, Basketball Society, on Twitter, we were asking people, you know, what kind of grade would you give the NBA today? A lot of people said it was a B. A lot of people gave it a B because there was just some things, like, about the, um, like, foul calls and stuff, how it was kind of, like, uh, too touchy with foul calls that they just couldn't give it an A. And while I agree with that, I, I think that there should be a little less of of whistles blown a lot because, you know, you want to watch them play. You don't want to watch foul shots all the time. You want to watch these guys play. But uh, while I agree with that, I don't think that should diminish the game. Like, we're, we're, we're talking about grading the NBA's game today. And it is some exciting basketball to watch. There's like four teams in the NBA right now that are just not really fun at all to watch and they're just terrible. But there's 30 teams, which means you got 26 other teams that are that have exciting games night in and night out that are fun to watch that have younger players that are on the like up and up and coming list. They got uh uh like players who could potentially turn into stars and they're dropping 30 something points and everything. It's an exciting time for basketball right now, especially because it just continues to grow and grow and grow. Because when I look at like the NBA and even just basketball in general, I see a presence on Twitter with that sport at a much higher level compared to the other sports. Now, I know like America is a football country, but when I'm on Twitter and not even looking at my own timeline, just looking at like trending things, all that kind of stuff. I'm seeing a whole lot more basketball stuff than I am football stuff. Even when the football season was going and it was football Sunday, I'm still on there seeing people talk about the basketball games rather than the football games that Sunday. And then, of course, you get those people like, oh, there's football on, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, who cares? There's basketball on. Like, that, I've nev I have never saw that, like, five years ago. It was always football all the time on Sundays, and now I, I'm seeing tons of people still like not even caring about football and talking about basketball, and that just really shows where it's going, the growth and everything, and a lot of that is to is to the um, whatever you call it. Uh, it, it's it's benefiting from the players. 
they they're the ones who are going out there and showing everyone that hey you don't need to be LeBron to be a really good player in the NBA sure you if you want to be like a Hall of Famer then yeah you got to be a guy as good as LeBron but these guys are getting into the NBA they're working hard on their own game they're not coming in with all these like heralded oh he's the next Michael Jordan he's the next Kobe Bryant he's the next LeBron James they're going in there doing their own thing working hard at their craft and becoming one of the better players that they can be. And that speaks a lot to the kids, to the middle school players, to the high school players, college players, everything. That's showing them that they too can get to the level of a, say, Kyle Lowry or DeMar DeRozan just by getting in there in the gym, working hard every day, and just loving the sport of basketball. And that's an awesome thing to see. To be honest with you, uh, I just want to touch on it real quick. The Suns GM saying that if there was one thing he could take back, it would be trading Isaiah Thomas. Duh, we all knew that. Come on, man, we all knew that it was a mistake. Especially now, like it's definitely easy to say it now. Hindsight is definitely twenty twenty with your team kind of in shambles now with. Uh, Brandon Knight, who's been hurt, um, Eric Bledsoe, who's been hurt. You traded away Dragic as well, and he's on the heat now, and they're looking to be a playoff contender. And you got Isaiah Thomas, who's helping lead the Boston Celtics to a number three seed in the East while your team is sinking to the very, very bottom of the West. Duh! Like, that's the easiest thing to say. It was like, oh, yeah, we made a mistake with that. We all knew you made a mistake with that. It just took you longer to say it than, than we all thought it should have. As soon as you traded Isaiah Thomas, we're like, that was stupid. Any basketball any basketball fan in general could have like, looked at that trade and said, you had Dragic, Bledsoe, and Isaiah Thomas. You traded Dragic. And then you traded Isaiah Thomas. So you're putting your, your teams in the hands of Bledsoe, which, I mean, you already did before this. But you got, you got rid of, like, two potential All-Stars. And you bring in Brandon Knight. No, no disrespect to Brandon Knight. He's been playing well. But, like, bruh, there have been so many people that are like, Isaiah Thomas is right on the cusp of an All-Star. He's a great at least sixth man. He, was, he played great as a starter for the Sacramento Kings. Anyone could have told you that was a mistake. I know all of us at Basketball Society were like, that was stupid. That was dumb. Come on, man. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for listening and watching another episode of Fish's Friday Rant. Uh, I will be back next week with another one of these and another Atlantic Files. Make sure you check out our website, www.basketball-society.com, and check us out on Twitter, at bballsociety underscore. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it all the time. Uh, make sure you check us all our podcasts out on iTunes as well. We're at the Basketball Society. and Drop us a rating. We would definitely, definitely appreciate that. So thank you guys, and I will see you guys next week. Peace.